Hi, I'm Janine, and this is Janine Sews. I'm a 50-something sewing blogger and vlogger, and I talk about my experiences trying to create a wardrobe that fits my life, that fits my body, and it's comprised of things that I love. So today I'm going to show you two projects that I've just completed, neither of which was on my goals list for the month or for the year, but that's generally how I sew. First project is this, and this t-shirt I just finished, and I made it up for the Pattern Review website 2020 Sewing Bee for the first round. If you aren't aware of what the Sewing Bee is or what Pattern Review is, Pattern Review is a website where people review patterns, they chit chat, and they also have a bunch of contests. And I happen to like contests. So every year I enter the sewing bee. Anyone can enter round one, then about half of the entrants in round one successfully make it to round two. It's then culled again for round three, and then there's a round four that I think usually has about 12 people. My goal is always just to make it past the first round. I did once. I'm hoping that I will again this year. So the challenge, and you have one week exactly to make your garment, your entry. The challenge this year for round one was to make a t-shirt, a t-shirt without a collar, a t-shirt out of a knit, and it has to represent childhood to you. So you have to figure out what that means to you. You can be as creative as you want or as literal as you want. And this year I decided to get a little more creative and a little less literal. Sometimes I've been very literal in the past. So I could have made a t-shirt that matched exactly a t-shirt that I wore when I was seven years old, but I decided to try something different. And I spent some time thinking about what childhood was to me. And truly it was a time when we were free to do anything, to try anything, to succeed, to fail, to decide you didn't like something, but it was all about trying different things. And one way that we recognized that we tried when I was a kid, I was a brownie and you would get a badge every time you succeeded or achieved something. So I decided to do up a t-shirt with badges on it. Badges for different things that you achieved. Um, I was going to use my embroidery machine, which I'm not very good at, and embroider on the fabric. And then someone said to me, why don't you just actually make badges, embroider the designs on a woven and then stitch them on like a badge. So that's what I did. On Saturday, I spent hours and hours picking out embroidery designs that I could download and load onto my machine. Now, I do not have a fancy embroidery machine and I don't know how to work it very well. I have a Brother LB6800 that I bought at Costco, but it has embroidery capabilities and you can download designs to it, as long as they aren't. For my hoop, they have to be four inches by four inches or less. So, I looked at all kinds of different patterns and downloaded 12 different embroidery designs, all of which were two inches or less. And I was really trying to find designs that were quite simple, kind of like we had on our brownie uniforms. And I, I pretty much got what I wanted. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I wound up using nine, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the designs that I downloaded. So I'm going to show them to you and tell you what they are. So the first one is a Canadian flag because I'm Canadian. And also on my brownie uniform, we had a Canadian flag badge. So that means something to me. And it's really a big part of my childhood because that's where I came from. That's my culture. Then I have a gardening badge, which I would have gotten in brownies. And I'm actually a master gardener. Then I have a campfire because, well, I mean brownies, you camp, and I've done a lot of camping in my life. Not recently, I've kind of become more enamored with nice hotel rooms than camping, but you know, that's kind of the brownie life and it's a kid thing. 
then this is a badge that I've earned. And this badge is an airplane because I've traveled so much in my life that I have earned the airplane badge. I've also, this is a treble clef, and I've also earned a music badge. I took piano for seven years. I took private singing lessons for two years, and now I'm starting to play the piano again. This is a big old fat cat, and that is my pet care badge that I would have gotten in brownies, and I probably did have in brownies. We've always had pets, we always will have pets. And then this is a quill with an inkwell because it's writing. When I was a brownie, I would have learned, been learning cursive. And I also write, I blog, I write at work. And then finally on the back, I have one of my adulting badges and that is a wine glass. I am sure I've earned that. So I made up the t-shirt first, had pretty good luck using my cover stitch on the hems. I kind of struggled with it on the neckline, but I did get it to work. Um, so I made up the t-shirt and then I just stitched all the badges on by hand. Um, I didn't want to stitch them on by machine because I knew that the knit fabric would probably stretch. And I also thought if I decide I don't like the badges, if it's a little bit too cutesy and kitschy, I can very easily take them off. But this is my entry. And I tell you what, I really love this badge on the front, the color. Maybe it reminds me of a military uniform, not that I was ever in the military, but I really like how this turned out. And I'm kind of hoping that I make it to round two. So this is what I worked on most of this weekend but I do have one other project that I worked on in the last week. My sister in Canada got a dog, a rescue dog for Christmas, and she was rescued from Mexico. And my sister lives in Calgary, where it's been minus 30 Celsius for like 10 days. And the poor little dog is freezing. So she sent me a note and asked me if I would make a coat for her little dog. Um, initially, I was going to just kind of you know, play around and make something. And then I actually went into my pattern stash and discovered that I had a dog coat costume or pattern. This is Quickso 4092. It's just a little coat for a dog and it's lined. That's one of the reasons why I thought this would be a good choice. I didn't have to buy it as well, but because it's lined and this little dog from Mexico has not grown a Canadian coat yet. So I wanted to use up fabric in my stash and I dug around and found some fabric that I had purposely bought for pet beds, for charity sewing. And I wound up using it to make this little coat. It's lined with fleece. It's supposed to be lined with flannel, but I decided to line it with fleece so that this little girl is a little bit warmer. It's a very simple pattern. I did screw it up. Of course, there are two pieces to the back, top and bottom, top and bottom. You're supposed to have like, I should have pink here and here and blue here and here, but I don't read directions very well sometimes. So, um, and I didn't, this was just a fat quarter, so I didn't have enough to recut it. And I thought, you know what? It's okay. It's gonna be fine for this little poochie. So it has the two pieces in the back. It's got a little collar. Then it has Velcro to go around her neck and then a Velcro band to go underneath her belly. This did not take long at all. And I'll probably make her another one because it was kind of a fun little project. And I, I like animals having really bright, fun colors and I'm, my sister's probably not gonna be really thrilled to see pink on this, but I think Angie, the little dog, will really love it and it will keep her warm. So those are the two projects that I worked on. Um, this week, I've been saving two things that are part of my goals. I got so news in the mail the other day and I have the Fabric Mart swatch booklet for February unopened, saving both of these for this evening to sit down and enjoy maybe with a glass of wine.
because, well, I've got the adulting badge in wine, so I think I can have a glass of wine. Hope you're staying warm, and I will see you very soon. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. If you want to be notified, you can ring the bell. I don't know how to do the ring the bell thing, but thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you really soon.